Hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you never miss an update from Neela Bakore Tutorials. In this part, we'll talk about an example of this phylum Annelida and that is earthworm. So this is our first example. The scientific name of the earthworm that we normally discuss the structure of is Feritima posthuma. And we have talked about its detailed structure in the chapter of structural organization of animals. But here also we will quickly go over the important structures. Feritima or the earthworm shows internal as well as external metamerism. So external and internal metamerism is seen. Metameric segmentation means there is segmentation in body externally if it is visible it is in the form of those segments which we call the annuli and if it is internally uh, metamerically segmented then internally also the structures are going to repeat from segments to segments. So in case of earthworm internal as well as external metamerism is seen. The number of segments that is the annuli or the metamers is 100 to 120. The first segment which has mouth is known as the peristomium. It has the opening that is mouth and in front of this there is one more structure a segment which is hanging and that is known as prostomium. This is peristomium stoma is an opening so it is surrounding that opening so if we talk about the first segment say this is the first segment and this is the opening that is the mouth so this would be peristomium or the first segment now there is one segment which hangs in front of it this is known as the prostomium so this is seen in case of earthworms the number of segment it varies from 100 to 120. Now there are some important segments which have some special structures. So this is the first one. Segments 14th, 15th and 16th have a ring like structure which is known as clitellum. And this clitellum actually will form the cocoon like structure in which the young earthworms would develop. So this is a clitellum. In case of earthworm, clitellum is permanent. It is always there. And once this clitellum is lost for the formation of that cocoon, immediately from the same three segments, new clitellar uh, part would be secreted. So it will always have this clitellum. Externally, when we see the earthworm, first segment is very clear, then clitellum is very clear. And the last segment is called the anal segment which has the anus that means it has the tube within a tube body plan. We have talked about this in general features. So the last segment is going to have uh, anus. There is no tail. Tail is the extension beyond the anal opening and here it is present in the last segment so there is no tail. It is just a tubular body. So these are important uh, parts which are visible from outside. The skin is brownish in color and it is brownish due to porphyrin pigment and that gives this color. The skin is the respiratory structure also that means in earthworm respiration is cutaneous. So it helps in respiration also. We have talked of in general features that the skin has three layers. The outer is the cuticle, middle is the epidermis and the inner is muscular layer. 
and the muscles are of both types that is circular as well as the longitudinal muscle. So, this is general for all annelids, we are just talking about some special uh, features. Earthworms are hermaphrodites. That means one earthworm would have both male and female reproductive structure. <clears throat> now, if we see the worm from the ventral side, we would find and we will just draw few limited segments. This is the 14th, then 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th. These are few important segments that we are drawing. 14th, 15th, 16th segments have this clitellar part which is a ring like structure. So, it covers this 14, 15 and 16 segments. On the ventral side, this is the ventral view that we are talking of. Mid ventral side, in 14th segment there is an opening and this is the female genital pore and it is mid ventral side on the ventral side just in the median part. 18th segment has two openings which are on the ventrolateral side and these openings these are the male genital pores and on 17th and 19th segments again here there are few dense thick structures these are known as the copulatory papillae and these are going to hold or help in holding the other earthworm during copulation. They are hermaphrodite that means both male and female sex organs are present in the same worm but they favor cross fertilization. Cross fertilization takes place. Now, how cross fertilization takes place is before that let us talk about one more structure. In case of earthworms there are some sac like structures which are known as spermatheci. These spermatheci they open on the segments. So, if we draw the worm like this and we are going to write these segments here this is 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. The spermatheci are sac like structure this is one sac like structure and there is an opening here again there is this opening and this sac like structure so there would be four such pairs in the sixth segment seventh segment eighth and ninth so here also we will have these two here also so this is how the structures are questions are tricky on this part if the location of spermatheca is asked, our answer is going to be 6th, 7th, 8th and 9th segment because we are talking about this balloon like structure. So, the balloon like structure that is spermatheci, they are located in this segment that is 6th segment, 7th, 8th and 9th. But if they ask us about spermathecal pores, then our answer is going to be 5, 6 that means the septum which is between 5th and 6th segment, 6, 7 that is this one, then 7, 8 and 8, 9. This is how the answers vary. So, if it is the theca, the sperma theca, then we will talk about the segment and if it is the opening, then we will talk about with a slash so that it indicates that it is between 5 and 6 or it is on that septum. So, now let us come back to this cross fertilization. During cross fertilization, the two earthworms align in such a manner that the 18th segment comes in contact with the openings of the spermatheci. So, that the sperms of this worm, they get deposited in the body of the other worm and then the earthworms would move. So, that all these spermatheci get filled. Now, after the sperms have been deposited in the spermatheca, now what is the situation if we are talking about this worm? Say this is earthworm A and this is earthworm B. 
Earthworm A has deposited its sperms in the spermatheci of earthworm B. Earthworm B now has the sperms of this one. Earthworms are protandrous. They are hermaphrodite, but they are protandrous. That means the male sex organs or the male gametes mature first. Now, after the sperms are deposited, the earthworm B would have the eggs ready. So now what happens is, if this is the worm, the clitellum is on 14th, 15th and 16th segment. The clitellum loosens up a little bit. So there is a space which develops between the body and this clitellum. And from the 14th segment, the eggs are released into this space. And now the worm retracts from this. That means it is going to come backward, move backward. So if it, the earthworm retracts, what happens is now the segments which come under clitellum are 13, then 12, then 11, 10, 9 and so on. So now when the clitellum comes over these 9th, 8th, 7th, 6th, 5th segments, the space is already there. So from this spermatheci, the sperms of earthworm A are also released. So on 14th segment, the eggs of this worm were released. And when the worm moves backwards, the sperms from the earthworm A are also released. And now the clitellum comes out. Now this clitellum closes from both the ends and this is what is the uthika or the cocoon. Fertilization takes place here and the baby earthworms would emerge from this structure. There is no larval stage that means the development is direct. Earthworms are very useful in agriculture, they are considered as friends of farmers. Reason, <coughs> they remain in soil, they keep making burrows in the soil and they feed on the decomposing organic matter. And that is why earthworms are also known as detritivores or detritivores because they feed on the decomposing organic matter. The waste which they release is known as casting. So it is called the wormy cast. And this wormy cast is nothing but the waste of the earthworm. And it is very good for the soil. It increases soil fertility. And that is why we consider them as friends of farmers. Plus, when they make burrows, it also helps in aeration of the soil. So, they are very useful in agriculture or in farming. So, this is what is important about earthworm. General features we have already talked of that they can be monotelic or ureotelic. If they are in plenty of water uh, areas, then they would be monotelic. If they are on land, they would be ureotelic. So, this is applicable to all the examples of Annelida. And for elimination of these nitrogenous waves, they have nephridia. Nephridia can be integumentary, septal or pharyngeal. These general things are common. Plus, as I said in the beginning that we have discussed earthworm in detail, all the systems of earthworm in de detail in the chapter of structural organization. But in animal kingdom, only this much information is required. Now in the next video, we'll take up two more examples of this kingdom, of this phylum, sorry.